Hi, I'm Dr. Satish Kumar and this is Kaizen Dental. Our aim here is to help dentists succeed. In today's Kaizen Dental Success Stories podcast, we have with us Dr. Rajiv Varma. Dr. Rajiv Varma graduated from Government Dental College and Hospital, Mumbai. He was a clinician for 35 years, a dental ceramist for 25 years, an IDA speaker for 24 years and a course conductor for 19 years. He has conducted more than 800 lectures and presentations both nationally and internationally. He also has the longest running course that is 255 batches on the topic porcelain veneers, crown and bridge, bonded restorations. He is also an official digital smile design instructor for India. Dr. Rajiv sir, it's really amazing that you have taken your time out and coming here to advise all the young dentists. I remember 12, year ba- 12 years ago, the first CDE program I had attended was yours. Till now, I remember a lot of dialogues of it and it was one of those programs which made me realize that I want to do much more in dentistry. So thank you, sir, for giving your time and being here. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Satish for first the invitation, then I love the name of your, uh, I, whether it, I should I call it an academy or should I call it your clinic name, Kai Zang, superb Kai, Kai Zen, K-A-I and Z-E-N. I love that name. I'm going to Google more about it tonight, but as you said, it's a Japanese uh, thing. So I'm sure it will have a lot of meaning in and that to meaning in depth. Good, good. I'm happy you remember. And I'm sure like you, many of me remember uh, for years, because only two things can happen with me in life. Only two things, which I say, normally I say at the end of the program, but I will today for the first time say it right in the beginning, you can only fall in love with this man or you can only hate this man. Only two (laughs) things can happen. But one thing is for sure, you will never forget this man. Great, sir. That's an assurance. That's an assurance. So with this, let's begin our program for today. And I would like, I, I, I am so super happy, always super happy to do something for the next generation of dentists. And if I can uh, motivate them, I can handhold them. I would love to take them to the next level, which they haven't even thought about. It. Let's begin. So, sir, uh, I know all your history. So I remember that you were among the people who had an option to get into MDS. Still, you decided that you are not going to do MDS. You wanted to do another route. I want to know why did you take that decision and how did your family, friends and others respond to it? Good. So to begin with, I can say, how much to Junior KG to 12 standard. After that, 4 years of BDS. Correct? I mean, that was enough for me. First of all, like 98% of my fellow colleagues, me too, never wanted to be a dentist. I had applied for MBBS and lost my medical seat for 0.33 of a mark. And that's how I landed into BDS. Big heartbreak, no? So four years. Huh? Big heartbreak, I said. Oh, it has happened with 98% of our colleagues. So let's not <laughs> call it a heartbreak. It was, you know, uh, the, the, she went with somebody else okay. in, on the MBBS side. <laughs> it, 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 so it does matter. It, it did matter in the beginning especially the first year of dentistry when I went to Government Dental College, Mumbai and I entered the college and I saw these 80 girls in the class and we migrated 20 boys. I said, Salah, where have we come, you know? And I, the first year was absolutely, I wanted to leave the institute. No way, I wanted to be a dentist. Nothing, I bunked, bunked, bunked. Like many other colleagues of mine. Of course, that's not the message I want to give to all of you. Don't bunk. <laughs> Because today only I read one beautiful joke on WhatsApp. For all those parents who bunked during their college days, they are all sitting online and attending lectures for their children today. <laughs> so don't like bunk. Karma. Okay? So don't bunk. This is, this is, and the joke is about karma. So, you know, you have to pay for it someday in life. And so every parent is paying for it today. All those who bunked, of course. <laughs> So never wanted to be a dentist only totally, and then life went on and then I mean see how the joke is. I was not I was super average student, nothing great. I got I think the highest in pedo and the highest was like 106 out of 150. 100 is passing. 
and 100 and 600 like peanuts but everybody was between 100 and 1 and 100 and 6 so that's how i stood first probably god knows some mistake they must have done and i got admission in pedo township and my girlfriend who is my wife today dr minakshi she got admission in conservative and endo so she took her mds and i refused to do so i said i am not studying anymore i never wanted to be a dentist i completed 4 years of uh, dentistry is more than enough and i don't know what i'm going to do in the future but uh, I, since i uh, did not leave dentistry for 4 years i think i'll pursue it let me see and take life as it comes they actually never thought much about it and i left that mds seat of course no regrets for that at all at all today and that time so there was no regret at all because i was in that no mood to study more so life just went on and then internship of course which i thoroughly enjoyed that's the first time i think i enjoyed dentistry because I, that opportunity to treat a patient by your own hands you know was was fantastic concept and in government dental college we had huge amount of patients so that was really really i think well done and then started working as a locum fortunate to get uh, uh, to work with dr sandesh mayakar and dr pravin acharya and the likes and uh, and of different different categories uh, levels of dent, uh, dental clinics from a low low cost uh, low poor a poor uh, say you could say uh, a lower uh, dent level dental clinic to high level dental practice so i could i, I worked with four five dentists like this and eventually in 1987 i started my own practice as a bds as a bds by the time my uh, girlfriend was completing her mds and uh, she finished it in 1988 and that's when we got married also you know so life just started i started my clinic everything of course the time when i said that i am not doing this mds in in uh, in, in in this subject or in any subject there was a reaction from my family and friends and relatives for sure uh fa- parents were not really bothered because um, uh, they were they were not you they never knew much about dentistry as such um, uh, my would be mother in law i remember once saying that uh, lo log kya kahenge you know what will people say uh, your uh, your wife is an mds and you are a bds so i still remember answering her in a very different style i said i can produce kids but i can't treat kids <laughs> and uh, you know this is looking at me why am i saying that i said no pedo down chair the subject all about kids and then life just went on and i practiced as a bds from 1997 till a time life changed which i which i'll answer if if sir dr satish asks me that question i'm surely he'll ask so i wanted to know sir how did you end up falling in love with dentistry eventually because you didn't like it initially and when you fell in love how did you become a master in the art when it comes to crown and bridge veneers and everything how did that transformation from someone who does not love uh, like it also or hates it to someone who loves it how was the transformation uh transformation i think uh, came in around 1990 91 period i don't know whom i met in life and i got one message from that person which i took it in a nice way and a proper way and the message probably was love what you do you know and then do what you love so i think that message was uh, indirectly directly sent towards me by a person uh, while having a dinner one day and i went home and i thought about it and i am a little risky guy so when i like something i take those decisions instantly and i said life cannot go on uh, like this i am not an mds which is fine i am a bds but i cannot be jack of all and master of all you know so i said i need to do something about it then thought about it and came to a conclusion that that probably the only subject which i loved in dentistry was prosthetics okay maybe our teachers right from uh, dr uh, barua to dr mrs mehta madam to dr ram madam to dr karani madam to i mean i can just go on and on you know all our teachers were so sweet and so good that uh, dr chitnis madam how can i forget her you know dr meshram sir dr kokal sir i mean i just liked that subject and my work was probably decent got a few a had got a few a grades in my final year in that clinic in that subject when i was in the clinics i said i think i'll work on this this particular parameter and then in 91 i actually started i bought a porcelain furnace 
and I started even my in-house dental laboratory. Can you believe that? But uh, it so wasn't a lot of risk. Bond, People didn't ask so you. you. Never knew this. So the prosthetic bond increased now two ways. One, though I liked it doing clinically, and now I bought the furnace first, and now I am trying to learn how to do a porcelain fused to metal crown or how to do a porcelain veneer, and um, and life just began. And then probably the jugalbandi of a clinician and the laboratory technician in me started working magically. I started loving what I was doing. I started loving the response I was getting from my patients. And then, of course, later on, the likes of Dr. Sandesh Maikar and so many other senior friends of mine started sending me work to my in-house clinical lab. And that lab slowly started becoming a little bit commercial also. And we were quite, uh, we had built a reputation as for famous for porcelain veneers that time, because that was a new thing in India. And I just started enjoying it. You could say that, you know, the money was also coming. The name was also coming. The fame was also coming. So I think I made, thought in 1994 that I, I have made the right decision of choosing the right subject. And the most important thing is falling in love with prosthetics. So before I fell in love with prosthetics, I had to take one major decision. Either I need to have guts to divorce dentistry or I need to fall in love with dentistry. So there was no question of divorcing dentistry because four years of hard work, labor, everything had already gone into it. Uh, fortunately, during our times, uh, Dr. Satish, you won't yes. believe how much was the fee for the annual fee at Government Dental College, including exam fees, everything was only 5,000 rupees. Wow. And our hostel <laughs> fee was even more fascinating. It was 50 rupees for six months. <laughs> <laughs> so in terms of, you know, uh, if you, if you say the money wasted, no, 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 the money was not really wasted, but considering my parents income, yes, 5,000 rupees that time was also quite a lot, Big amount. but anyway, money was still very, very low. And I took the decision of falling in love with dentistry. And then I just expanded on that one sentence. One person had told me in life that you need to not only fall in love with that thing, you know, you need to do it lovingly also. So I just went further and said, I can't be jack of all, as I said. I mean, you can't be jack of all. You can't be master of all. Forget we Indian dentists are doing one huge mistake. We are trying to become jack. We are thinking that we'll become master of one. But in the process, we are not even becoming jack of one. You know, we are we are messing up. So I think I missed, got this message right in my early days. And there what I am today, happy, contented, satisfied. No problems, go to dentistry, but start loving the profession. But how did that transformation from loving it to teaching it started? How did you make that? Oh shift? my God. Loving to teaching. Teaching is out of question. I never thought I could teach. As a school student, my teachers in literally eighth, ninth, and even 10th standard make me sit. I was in a co ed school, Indian Education Society or King George in Hindu colony Dadar in Mumbai. And these teachers of mine, class teachers, used to make me sit amongst girls so that at least I could speak to girls, you know. So just imagine how shy I was. I could never speak with, forget girls or women, I could never even speak with my classmates, boys, you know. I was a reserved type, you could say. I could hardly talk. I could hardly make friends, nothing. Then it. It's 11, 12 standard, then life little opened up. And then the BDS level, the life really opened up. And I don't know, it was a gradual change. How did teaching start? Well, I can definitely say, since I had started falling in love in prosthetics and I was started to work only in prosthetics, even though I'm not an MDS in prosthetics, from 1991 to almost 1996, I was constantly working only on making my own crowns, making my own vineyards, doing preparations in the mouth and perfecting or trying to excel in the subject of prosthetics. Uh, some young doctors used to come to me as a locum or as to, as to come as an observer. Uh, like uh, that time, Dr. Madhusudan Bedre, the famous aesthetic dentist, and uh, I remember my sir, Dr. Heman Dusia, maxillofacial oral surgeon, he used to come as a consultant to my clinic and few more, but especially these two people, when they come, you come to my clinic and see me working, 
and see me doing these kind of jobs <coughs> they used to always uh, tell me rajiv you should start teaching uh, people need to know more about porcelain veneers all what you are doing and uh, i said no no i can't teach there is no way i can teach and they said no that's being selfish probably uh, you will learn the art while you start teaching and i don't know it just happened <coughs> dr bendre gave me the first opportunity to speak at the maharashtra state conference at ullasnagar that was my first lecture march 27th 19 uh, march 27 1997 i think and it was a live porcelain veneer patient in the morning one patient and i did one more patient in the afternoon live porcelain veneer bonding and then the confidence just went on after that and as the, then once you start you know rowing the ship or uh, rowing the boat you come to know that how to do it and then slowly became the captain of the ship in the speaking world and i'm happy that all my listeners across india and abroad whoever has attended my lectures through id or other fandent or world dental association or my courses or any other platform or webinars last year through world dental association even today's program with kaizen i am uh, i don't know i am super confident now in speaking and um, i am i'm internally happy that i am able to transfer the whatever i have in this uh, i won't call it knowledge as such but i would say the skill sets i would love to transfer them as much in my remaining years of life which according to my kundli or my horoscope i am still going to be around for at least 20 more years so Good expect me to hopefully continue like this for a long 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 time though i have retired as a clinical dentist after 34 years of practice i took the opportunity during covid times to call it off but i will continue my teaching for sure great sir so you were in a era where people thought if you get mds you should go for it but today there are many students who want to do mds but maybe because of the financial status or because of the seats they are not able to score enough well they are not able to get into mds so what is your suggestion for a bds to be successful as much as you are in today's day and age okay so to begin with i would say uh, uh dr satish you, the last line what you said is as successful you are correct yes, uh, one message i would love to give to everybody who's listening to, to me today do not follow anybody in life follow means do not try to become like somebody in life you know do not try to get success like somebody in life try and work towards your success story every human being has that capability you just needs to explore it and then you work towards your own success story i want to hear 30000 success stories per year that's the number of dentists passing out every year and you all can do it i can guarantee you because if i can do it anybody can do it that's for sure so going back to your question which was uh, you said just 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 repeat that question so how to be successful as a bds dentist who cannot get into oh, yeah, mds yeah. so you started with during our times uh, frankly speaking during our times in 1985 nobody cared whether you are an mds or a bds nobody really cared the concept was very simple if you got marks you entered into mds and that was the that was the done deal there were even people like me who got into but never took any uh, admission and, and then nobody cared uh, i remember though one thing Uh, i don't know whether i can allow to use that word because that's that's like uh, you know not not good for the dog community but i but i remember one person telling me tere ko kutta bhi nahi puchega agar tu mds nahi hai to you know and the joke 34 years of private practice and not even a not even one patient has asked me whether you are an mds or a bds not even one patient has asked me whether you are a bds or a mds okay my 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 visiting card was always it was bds and whenever i gave that card to all my patients and every patient of ours in practice used to receive that card not even trust me friends one patient has asked me what has changed in today's world correct nothing has changed in today's world also nothing has changed one small change has happened that's it if you are an mds 
you have a better prospect of a job you have definitely a better prospect to work as a consultant with some senior dentist or a group of dentists you have better prospects to work with a chain of dental clinics because that's where dentistry is moving in india for sure okay so that's where your chances and prospects increase provided you do mds if you are only a bds in today's world it's not going to matter at all in your clinical practice no doubt about it okay let's take scenario number 2 Say approximately thirty thousand dentists are passing every year out of some three hundred and four dental colleges. That's what I remember a year ago. Yes, every year, there are approximately eight thousand or nine thousand MDS seats. That's it. Correct. So yes, that sir. means thirty thousand minus eight thousand is twenty-two thousand. That means even if we, even if all thirty thousand dentists in the year two thousand twenty-one. Got hundred out of hundred marks, and everybody stood first. Only eight thousand of them can get into MDS. Yes, sir. Correct. I am talking about the NEET exam. Understood. Only eight thousand can get. That means twenty two thousand have to remain BDS, or they may compete for next year. Or next year you compete. Suppose next year also already those eight thousand are captured. You know, so twenty two thousand dentists, anyways, will remain BDS. so whether it is through because of your neat marks because of your financial you could not afford a private medical dental college or maybe for some other reason you did not take mds or you did not get mds what life doesn't stop there at all why can't you work in your at your bds level like an mds why can't you do exactly what i did in the subject of subject of prosthodontics i am not a prosthodontist but i will glad dr satish to tell you today prosthodontist north india north india especially delhi where i have been visiting for my lectures since 2008 have given me have started calling me a prosthodentist dentist and i am absolutely fine with it i am absolutely fine with it i may not have the knowledge or the degree of a prosthodontist but i have can definitely say i have that clinical brain and 10 clinical fingers to do decent quality prosthetic work that's out of sweating it out that's out of working only on one subject since 1991 so satish one joke yes in around 1994 a family of six came to my clinic okay yes. and all six the senior the senior mr rao i think he said i have got all my family dr varma i want you to do see everybody today i said are wah six patients in a varo one family amazing concept correct right? so i so the i'll ask the senior mr rao first to sit into the chair and the moment he sat i saw that he removed his old complete denture and gave it in my hand you know i looked at it and i peeped inside the mouth and i saw zero ridge do i was doing decent denture work because it's part of prosthetics and i used to love making complete dentures looking at the ridges and he's considering his age of 80 plus or something i just said i think I, your case is beyond me i need to refer to you to a prosthodontist who will do justice to you and make a nice hopefully a great denture for you so he said okay that means you won't do i said no this case is beyond me if it was a good bone i would have done it so he got up then the the grand the 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 the, the grand uh, yeah uh, the mother in law of that dot of that lady sat in the chair and i peeped into her mouth and she said all my teeth are mobile so before i said i mean a normal dentist like me or anybody would say i think you need extraction total extraction correct you know what came out of my mouth yes, sir. oh this is periodontia and i don't do this part at all so i need to refer to you to a periodontist so she asked me what is this who is this periodontist i said this is the doctor which deals with the gums and i am zero about it so i think uh, sorry i can't help you at all so she gets up you know then the father sits in and i look into his mouth and i say oh you need a root canal treatment and i don't do it my wife is an endodontist dr minakshi 
Uh, she comes in the, uh, she'll come, she, you can meet her on tomorrow, take an appointment, she'll do the root canal. So again, that person is saying, well, that means you don't do root canal also. I said, no, no, I am not at all. I'm zero about it. I am a king of perforations rather than root canals. So of course, he never understood what is perforations, but that's my dialogue. Uh, then his wife sat into the chair and she had a, she had an angular tooth. Uh, wisdom tooth and she had pericoronal flap, some and some and chronic. You said, this is the fifth time I'm having this pain. I have difficulty jaw opening. I said, don't even do the exercise of opening the jaw. I have Dr. Heman Dusia who is an oral and maxillofacial surgeon. He comes to me once a week or twice a week. You come that day and he will look into it and he'll advise you what to do. She also gets up. And then that young girl was about to jump into the chair and I stopped her and I said, oh my, you have crooked teeth. So I turned towards her parents and said, she needs orthodontia treatment. She needs braces. So I'll refer you to Dr. Girish Karandikar, who is my orthodontist in uh, your dadar in the colony uh, out on the main road. So he said, I know Dr. Girish Kandar, but Dr. Varma, you don't do braces treatment. I said, no, 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 no. That's an MDS orthodontist, special people's God they are for me. I'm referring there. Now the last child remains, you know, a small boy. He was, a, he was refusing to sit into the chair and he smiled and he had rampant carries. I could make out. So from five feet distance, the boy doesn't want to sit in the chair and I don't want to touch the boy. You know what I told the parents? And this is a classic case of generalized caries, rampant caries. I don't touch children at all. Okay. So I think I'll have to refer you to a pedodontist. So that time we had Dr. Pedodontist, Dr. Naina Acharya at opposite Portuguese church at Dadar. And so I wrote a note. So all of them got letters from me. All of them went out. These They paid for six of them. I mean, the South Indian family, they never bargained. They paid for six. Of course, the consultation was migra. Migra, some 50 rupees or something that time. And they walked out. The door closed. A minute later, there was a knock on the door and the senior Mr. Rao walks in and he says, Dr. Verma, if you don't mind, can I ask you one question? I said, of course, please go ahead and ask. He said, six of us came. We had six issues and you issued six letters to six specialists. Then what do you do? So I said, I do crowd and bridge work. None of you had that issue in your mouth. And I do porcelain videos and I do simple, complete dentures. There's only these three things. And my wife does end on root canals. The man turns, then he again turns back and says, can I ask you one more question? I said, go ahead and ask. You know what he asked? This much is enough for you. So I said, no, I did not understand. So he said, this gives you enough money to survive one wife two children. Is it enough? I said, I mean, there are, I am working 18 hours a day. I have uh, two dental chairs. There is no time in life. Wife is already cribbing, but after producing two kids, you're not giving me any time. You know, uh, I said, it's more than enough. I am, I am, if you're asking me earning wise, I'm earning sufficient. At least wife is happy. So trust me, Dr. Satish, one subject out of a dozen subjects of dentistry and out of the only, I work in crown and bridge and porcelain veneers mainly, but one topic porcelain veneers gave me everything in life what I want. Great. So, so take a lesson from this. You are a periodontist. I want you to do exclusive periodontal work. I'm doing exclusive periodontal work. Which you said that after a few years of practice, you shifted exclusive, which I am now proud of you. But now in Perio, I want you to select only one thing in Perio for you, for which you slog for the next five years and create your name and fame in the world of periodontics. Yes. Global. Global. Don't try to be a famous periodontist. Try to be a famous crown lengthening procedure guy on the in the globe on the, on the in the whole globe, you know. Or try to be something, I mean, amazing in Perio, a GTR membrane specialist, or God knows what, or something totally new, which Dr. Satish will invent. Yes. I give you five years from today. Five years. Sure, sir. Sure, sir. So my next question is. Uh, you've given so much of advice for PDS students and if you're doing MDS just to super specialize in everything. 
other than just clinical career oriented work what is your overall advice because i know you have great process of how to look at life so i want you to share some points of how a young dentist not just clinical dentistry anything in general can be successful and happy in life not just about going to super specialization okay not to only through of course of course not only through so this is just part of dentistry yes because we are a dentist and we need to perform this only 8 hours a day that's it so don't do that mistake of what i did in life of working for 18 hours i used to work for say almost 8 hours in my clinic and then 4 hours in my dental laboratory don't do that mistake 8 hours was perfect and 8 hours whatever you want to earn in life or whatever name you want to create fame you want to create you have only 8 hours to do it in life so the number one suggestion for that i would give is other than clinical dental work is work 9 to 5 if you want to achieve many things in life work 9 to 5 now don't say patients can't come in the or my patients can come only in the evening don't say that it's an unacceptable answer because if you were in america today if you were in europe australia new zealand almost any part of the world today you would be working 9 am to 5 pm 9:30 to 5:30 or 10 to 6 so nothing is different the whole of america works women in america work there are more housewives in india who can come to your practice in the afternoon hours than definitely in america and europe and australia and new zealand okay so i will not accept that answer that people can't come if every dentist in india starts working 9 to 5 one to you will have the fulfillment of working as a dentist for 8 hours and you will have a fulfillment of doing your duty towards your life after your clinical hours you will get that time presently what we are doing is rubbish 9 to 1 then we are sleeping bloody from 1 to 4 or running to a charity dental practice even we are young and then again working from 5 to 9 and in the process trying to just earn money to stand on our own feet trying to survive in the profession of dentistry with constant fear of competition why are you doing this then where is your part of your you know your life where is your life don't say dentistry is my life that's another rubbish you will hear dentistry is a part of our life absolutely a part of it is only 8 hours you shouldn't be doing dentistry for more than 8 hours okay so if you hear that Uh, this rajiv who is talking to you has worked for 20 hours a day yes i have worked but i have done that mistake so now i don't want any youngster to repeat that mistake what i have done in life okay 8 hours is enough have 4 hours for yourself every day so i have this program called design your life dr satish which i took last year online yes, and in I all would. my last i think 7 8 years or uh, in my courses in my clinic in tane i have been talking about small snippets of it into you know trying to give but this time i developed a proper program two days which i'm try planning to conduct in person in that i have these concepts you know is uh, what is life other than dentistry and what we should be doing yes we should be looking as my wife keeps saying because she is a yoga guru look after your health then right? look after your hobby correct right? start playing some games start meeting people so i have one concept called building relationships you build relationships in that 4 hours with your family your own family your neighbors family your other family members you are relationships with your gym guys whoever other people who come there the gym staff relationship if you play some game just build relationships because in life what is more important is these relationships and not the money part of it the beauty of building this relationships is many of these relationships convert into patients see the joke understood we are running to get a patient and in the process we are losing our relationships how about going back onto the drawing board try to create our relationships and how about these relationships after they develop trust in us because of that relationship become our patients or refer patients to us without any business motive of course 
a true heartfelt relationship trust Understood. me it will always convert into some meaningful patients and this meaningful patients will not only give fulfillment of your clinical dentistry with good work they will in return pay you the so called m o n e y for which we all are working but the pathway this young generation or even my generation and even i took in life was money first and the reason is that's how indian society is built around us that's how this marketing world that's how amazon markets that's how flipkart markets we want a new phone every now and then we want to buy a new car every now and then we want to buy new clothes every you don't need all of that that's your desire so another message need want desire understand the meaning of all these three words yes you should desire yes you should have that want feeling but then there is an appropriate time and an appropriate age for everything okay and so i can go on and on satisha you need to no like sir, to sir i want stop. to know i'm sure i'm 100% sure your course is going to be absolutely amazing so for the audience i want to know if they are planning to do it how can they get in touch with you and know more about the course and how do they enroll oh yeah, yeah. any of my programs i'm fortunate satish to run one of the longest running crown and bridge and porcelain veneer program in india till date i just finished my batch number i think 255 with over 4000 course participants from all over the world amazing and uh, it's such a heartfelt feeling you want any information about me it's on www dr rajiv r a j i v verma v e r m a .com dr rajiv verma .com you just go on to that website fill in the info and we will receive an email and then once we receive the email my staff dipika she will get in touch with you for sure okay or you can get in touch with dr satish or you can get in touch with me on facebook on rajiv verma which is my facebook account or on my page which is dr rajiv verma or you can get in touch with me on digital smile designers india either of anywhere or just just ask for my number around and you will get my mobile number too which you can definitely send a message on so don't worry about how to contact me. you will so. be able to <laughs> I, uh, I am and you are a very approachable easier. person for i want to tell the audience yes, he is very approachable, approachable. you have any problem you can just call him up and tell him sir i have a problem how do i do it he is always available that is one amazing thing yes. about him that i will that i will surely promise <laughs> if i receive any sms from any of my course participant whatsapp messages messenger facebook with messages god knows from where email i would normally reply before sleeping in the night i would have cleaned my phone completely completely yes, today sir. morning i got up little early at 6:30 am i wrote to dr iman shubeda he had asked me a question in the night after i think i slept i sleep early so i said slept in the morning first thing i get up is even before rubbing my eyes i see this message i sent him his reply so i had a empty phone in the morning at 6:30 <laughs> no messages everything answered amazing sir promise. that's for sure Yes, so it's really amazing. I'm sure the audience would have got a lot of things from you. You're always there to be guiding us throughout our journeys. Thank you, sir. Thank you for everything. Oh, no mention at all. Thank you so much, Dr. Satish. And uh, you wish you have want to wish to have me any time. Please call me again any time. Sure, sir. I will make a small program for you any time and every time for any good cause. I am always available. Thanks a lot, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much bye bye everybody whoever is watching okay do love dentistry and fall in love with only one subject or one topic of dentistry and achieve your name fame the moment you achieve your name and fame money will follow you money has no other place to go except your pocket but don't do the mistake of chasing money and not working on name and fame it is the name and fame you work first by the time you are 32 years of age in dentistry you should have got your name in position by the time you are 35 you should have got your fame in position and by the time you are 38 40 trust me money will be chasing you so with this i say bye bye best wishes to all the dental world whoever is watching me today please share the video if you like it 
with every dental clinic in India. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. Thank you, sir.